So on today's video we're going to look at how you can play Windows 95 and 98 games on a modern PC. Um, it's, it's a fairly quick tutorial um, and without further ado let's start. So the first thing you need to do is download Winbox for 86box. So 86box is the emulator it will be using or the, the virtualization machine it's, the package it's going to be using. But Winbox is like a front end which makes it a lot easier to do. One other thing I would also download is if you go to philscomputerlab.com, if you need any drivers for like the sound cards or the 3D FX cards, and this is a great place to get them from. And finally, to get the actual OS itself, you need to go to WinWorld, which has all the old uh, OSs in there. So if you go to the library and you can see that there's, you can download whichever one you want. I wouldn't recommend downloading modern versions of Windows because obviously there's copyright issues there, but with stuff like Windows 98, which isn't supported anymore, it's um, it's fairly alright, I would imagine. So again, you just go down to whichever version you want to download, and the serials are at the side there. So once we've downloaded the files from the websites that I've shown prior, we then need to run Winbox to set up the virtual machine that we're wanting to use. So we double click on that and we'll load that up now. So the first thing we need to do is click on new machine because we want to set up a obviously a virtual machine. So it will run you through basically on how you're setting this up and it will use predefined setups that you can change and tweak afterwards. So if we click on next, we'll call it Windows 98 we'll make sure it goes to whichever directory click on next and then you've got an options of what type of PC you want to set up so we'll go with a Packard Bell something that can run Windows 98 you c that you can see here. and again all these systems can be installed if you wanted to so it's I'll modify the hard drive because it's a VHD file. I don't know what size it is, so it's 1.5 gig. So we'll just up that to 3 gig. I'll we'll click on next. So we've got the hard disk set, disk set at 3 gigabytes. We've got a 16 speed CD ROM. So we'll click on next. So we'll click on show more settings after creation, then we can run down them and we can sort of talk about what each of the different things do in the background. We click on next so as you can see there's all these options to the left and we've selected the Packard Bell PB680 Intel MMX at 166 but I'm going to up that to 200 obviously the speed of your machine you select also depends on the current speed of your, your PC that you're using I'm using an i5-9400F so hopefully we should be okay so the display again is automatically selected. You can have Voodoo graphics if you want. One of the things to remember is that from the the um, pages at the web pages I showed at the beginning, you need to install drivers for these just like you would on a, a normal PC if you was installing graphics cards and things like that. So we'll leave it as the S3 Verge DX375. The input device is a standard PS2 mouse. I'm also going to add a two-axis four-button joystick, which is my Xbox controller. The sound is set at a Sound Blaster 16 plug and play, but I want to up that to an AWE32. Again, you've got all the, lots of options to change it to different things. The network I'm not going to set up because it's it is a bit fiddly to set up, and to be honest, because it's Windows 98, not much would run through it anyway. So the ports again, unless you're going to collect connect to printer or something like that, it's not something you need to mess with. Uh, the hard disk, as you can see, is selected there. Floppy drive, you can select different types. So we've got a 3.5 inch, 1.44 megabyte disk, uh, floppy disk drive and uh, an Atapi uh, CD drive, 16 speed install. So we shall click OK. And as you can see to the left, it's now created that machine. And like I said prior, you can create multiple machines on here, so you can have different setups, or you can change the setups of that and have different machines on there as well. So what we need to do is now go into the machine and start it. So we do that like this. 
and this will load up the machine but like I said one of the things we need to do is go into the BIOS and make sure everything's set up how we want it to be set up see if I can make that full screen so you can see it better so let's go into the BIOS so again just like a normal BIOS on any computer you can see all the options on here so you make sure the date's set correctly so it is the 10th of December as the time of recording yes it is 20 to 1 in the morning but I'm a night owl so I don't sleep very well <laughs> so you can see that the hard drives selected you can auto configure it the maximum capacity is 3048 megabytes which is correct escape to get back we've got no slave the Hitachi CDR is installed and the boot options now this is important so we go into there the first boot defines really is you want the CD-ROM because that is going to be boot from your Windows CD-ROM that we've downloaded second is hard disk and third I always put floppy on there just as a backup in case you need to run anything from like an image file so all the other options so it's Pentium MMX technology speed 200 megahertz with a 512 cache we don't want any uh, security settings so exit saving changes we press enter and now that should load up the processor the, the computer so we need to insert a bootable, bootable media device so we just need to minimize the screen and under media if we go into image and just insert where you've saved your Windows file that you downloaded earlier so for me it's in here it's there we'll select that stick on open and then it should go back to full screen don't show that message again right there you go so it's detected the Microsoft Windows CD so we need to boot from the CD-ROM so we want to start Windows 98 setup from CD-ROM and this will then download the relevant files and things to be able to boot up and format the hard drive and everything like that so we're now getting into setting up the windows so here we go the welcome screen this takes me back <laughs> I remember this many times before so we need to configure the unallocated space on the hard drive we created because currently it's just nothing on there so yes enable large disk support I say to continue it will reset and now it should come through the same screen again and we can then carry on with the install so we boot from CD-ROM, start from Windows so as you can see this is now formatting the C drive that we've created and not your C drive that is on your on your computer so don't panic you're not deleting all your files that you you're now working from so this does take a bit of time this has taken about five minutes to format the size of a three gig hard drive obviously quite large so we just need a bit of patience but we are coming to the end of it now so as soon as it's finished we can move on to the next step So this is now completed and we now go on to install Windows. So to continue we press enter. It's going to perform a routine check on the system. It's basically scanning the disk we've just created to make sure there's enough free space. And now it's going to copy the files it needs to set up Windows and there we go. We're now going to in install Windows onto our hard drive that we've set up. So we click on Continue. And this is going to run through the setup of Windows. Again, this might take a bit of time. Estimated time is 30 to 60 minutes. I don't think it'll take that long, but what I will do is I shall forward the video to the end. 
if anything comes up that I need to show you then I'll record that as well but yeah it should basically just be a matter of following the on-screen instructions uh, see windows I'll say it's now preparing the directory and will now set it up so again I'll come back at the end once it's done all this I'll just make this I'll forward forward wind to the end of the to the installation So now when um, Windows has finished installing its components, it resets and then sets. it's now setting up the hardware that we've installed. So I can boot from the hard disk, hard disk now because it's now installed onto the hard disk. So now we're just putting your make your information. We set the agreement. Click on next, and this is where we now need to enter the product key. So I'll now enter my product key, but I shall not record this because it's off the back of my um, CD that I've got. So I'll just be one second. So once we've entered your key, we can then go into Windows itself. So we've now entered the key, so we click on Finish. And this is now setting up hardware and finalizing the settings. Again, this takes a few moments. So we now need to set the time zone and everything on the system, so just like as if you were setting up a real PC. Where is it? Uh, where when it means Greenwich a mean time, we'll apply that. Okay. And now it will just continue to set all the rest of the Windows things up. So hopefully now we should hear the sounds of windows in a second.
So now it's just installing the drivers for each of the selected components. So we now restart it and fingers crossed it should now boot up. There we have it, the sounds we all know and love, or hate. I'll close that down and there you go we're now into Windows as if we were in Windows on a standard PC I don't know if I can change the settings to a higher resolution let's have a look Keep those settings, okay. And there we go. The next thing I'm going to do is, while we're just here, is, is take out the the CD so that it doesn't keep booting up into it every time we we do it. So we can eject that, and then we'll go back into the full view again. So there you are. We're in. We're now actually in Windows. So as if we were in any other Windows, we can get the MS DOS prompt up if we want. So let's say we wanted to install a game from an ISO file. What we would need to do is go into the media option and select an image, which I've already done. So I'm put in my Daytona game that I've got. So you would just go into this, click on image, and select the image you wanted to install. Once you've done that, it's almost put that that. ISO file if you like in the virtual CD drive of the machine so then what you would do is you would go to my computer like you normally would and there you can see Daytona USA is is there so I double click on that as if I want to install it and then it will install it so we can either do the minimum or the maximum well we do the maximum because it's literally 21 meg the one thing with this CD, with Daytona, and I know this is an issue with it, it doesn't play the music from the CD because you have to reallocate the the drive letter to A, I believe. But well, I'm not going to go into all that, so we'll just play it without the music. So we'll create the directory, and it just copies over that information. So it's searching to see which version of DirectX I've got. If if it did need it in a modern version, it would install that. So once it's done, you can click on play. And hopefully in a second it will bring up the game. And there we go. So let's give it a whirl. I went to arcade mode. Please select a race course. Beginner. Well, chicken beginner course, because I'm not very good on the others. Please choose manual automatic. or automatic transmission. Gentlemen, Gentlemen start, start your engine. As you'll see, I just like on the Saturn version, the clipping on the original PC version was terrible. It wasn't until they bought the next version out that it got better. The, I think it was like the championship version, as with the Saturn. Three, Three two. One, one. 
I think the actual next version supported 3D effects cards, whereas this is literally using software rendering, so and the reason it can't do it. But to be honest, at the time this was amazing to get this on the PC because there weren't that many games out like this. Apart from screaming. But you can see, play is fine, I can play the game. So if I'm back in 1996 or 1998 or whenever the game came out. Whoa. So yeah, so you have to come out of it, you're just doing like you normally would, so you go to game, exit game, and you take it back to Windows. can shut that down uh, we can shut that down one of the things I would say as well is that if you want to use files or folders instead of ISO images there's a good program called image burn which is free to download and you would then burn the folder as an ISO file so you, you can, there's an option to select burn folders ISO file and then all those f file and uh, files and folders are on that disk you can insert that into your virtual hard drive, uh, virtual CD drive, sorry, and then copy over those files onto your C drive into whichever folder and then run it from there. So to shut it down, you just click on shut down and shut down again. And it should take you to the old screen. It says it is now safe to turn off your computer. There you go. So we can minimize it and literally click on the box to shut down. Are you sure? We are sure. And there you go. Well, have fun. I hope this tutorial is helpful for you. Um, and enjoy. Thank you very much.